I'm not joking. I actually have had dreams about those dates since Lunch 2.0. It brings a whole new meaning to the idea of date night. We're not going out. We're just mm. having bacon dates. wrapped dates. Mm. We need bacon music. I do need bacon music. That is not bacon music. I'll say bacon. No. Bacon. It's bacon for dinner. Bacon for lunch. Bacon for breakfast. That's the munch. I say bacon. Bacon. That's not bacon music. This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. Tonight, we're joined by Bacon and Scott Kavitin. And as always, Dr. Normal. Hello. Bacon and Kavitin are synonymous. Is his mic on? I don't know. His mic is coming on. (laughs) There we go. There There it is. is. (laughs) That was not Bacon. That was was Scott. Yes, yes. (laughs) The Bacon isn't going to talk because we're going to eat it. Okay. So, um, so it's after hours, and we have all kinds of pork products in front of us. Know, and my so first exciting. question for you, Scott Kavitin, is prosciutto, serrano, bacon, are they the same? <laughs> Don't ask me that. Uh, or are they, are they all worthy? Are they on the same level? Oh, are they on the same level? Oh, I yeah. thought you were asking me This is your question. Yeah, this is the, in your uh, mind. You know what? I mean, it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's just something it's the same thing that's different it's it's all good though i have no preference i put all of them on pizza for example yes 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 and we uh, primarily put prosciutto on our pizza but yeah 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 i do this i do a really mean um like i make my own pizzas like yes. doughs and everything we're gonna talk about yeah, that you guys we make we make cheater cheater pizza but you make oh. the real deal yeah it's like all you know handmade and everything but you, you can do a, a really good um you know cheese with prosciutto and then what you do is, um, right as it comes out of the oven, you put a bunch of arugula on it. Oh, and yeah. And it's still cooking. And then so the arugula gets a little bit of some love on it. You're speaking my pizza language. It's good stuff. Oh. All right. I'm going to hand out now. I've made a little goodie for everybody. I've made so excited. vanilla bean ice cream with um, shaved dark chocolate on top. Nice. And a crispy pancetta we Strip. call this a bacon dessert. It's our bacon dessert. Oh, it's it's mm. it's if you it's Dr. a bummer Norma. you're not here right now, everybody else who's out in the audience, because I'm gonna take a picture of this. It's awesome. I'll be twitpicking this soon so that you What's can see. Up? It. Sorry. So so how are we? It, so we're on Iron Chef right now. Mm-hmm. I think you should take a tiny bite of the pancetta. Okay. Mm. Mm. So and taste the salty goodness, and then a scoop of salty the, ham, and mm-hmm. then ice cream with with. With uh, chocolate. Mm, mm-hmm. And I know we're does not supposed work? to eat on the air, but it kind of does. Does it work? I was expecting to be a little grossed out, but <laughs> no, I'm very totally happy works. right now. It's like the voodoo donut, right, yeah. with the maple bacon. So the, this, this is essentially how to work a pork product oh into my goodness. your dessert. Yeah. Totally. I'm really happy right now. <laughs> totally chewing into the mic. Um, um, um. Perfect. Oh my goodness. So, welcome to Strange Love Cooking. <laughs> I'm. What's that girl's name? That. What's her name from from the 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 famous De Laurentiis family, right? Gino, Gina, whatever. Giada. Giada. Or, Giada yeah. De Laurentiis. Yeah, we'll be on the Food mm-hmm. Network soon. Mm-hmm. Mm, with salty, salty. I'm eating my dessert, man. <laughs> salty sorry, I'm goodness. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's yes. what our intern is for. This is what after hours is. After hours is when we eat in the microphone. You're not supposed to eat on camera or in the mic, but mm. we're going to anyway. Is that crunch? Oh man, it's so good. That's um, <clears throat> when Scott arrived this evening, the house was filled with smoke. That was from crisping the pancetta. Oh, it's great. So, what do you think? You <laughs> well might, done. You might try this at home. Uh, way ahead of you. Uh, I'm, I'm other thinking, Cammy, if you're listening, please have this one when I get home. I'm sorry, other Cammy. 
<laughs> I was kind of imagining it with the bacon kind of like little bits over the top. Oh, you were expecting me to crumble no, it? Yeah, this is actually the, the Iron Chef part of this. I so. thought it would be nicer with the, the mm-hmm. whole piece of pancetta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I you know, Cami Chaos, I just thought if it were crisped out, but but I did think you brought out the taste of the bacon, although the uh, vanilla ice cream was a little right. overshadowing. So, so He's next being a, time. Uh, Iron Chef Judge. Next time you can shut it. I'm that big it. fat guy who's a real jerk. I want to be Iron a judge Chef. on that show. I Everybody be. wants to be. How? Yeah. Why don't they have like you know a Portland Portland people Iron Chef version of Iron Chef where they mm. ask me and and Scott and maybe Doctor Normal because he's in the room too here. Sure. To be on the show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that would kill. That'd be awesome. Uh, <clears throat> okay, Local some people in the chat from the neighborhood like you could, you could do like a. Portland Iron Chef. Iron Chef Portland. We I would should love do an Iron to Chef do Portland. a Portland Iron Chef. But the pie off is tomorrow. <clears throat> the pie off so. is tomorrow, so it's like the Portland, you know, Iron Chef pie off. <laughs> exactly. So how many people are in the pie off? I don't a know. Lot of people. Pie Iron Chef? Is that what pie, pie Iron pie. Chef, yeah. Let's see. I know Betsy and Lilo and Media Chick and Melissa Lyon and Radio Gretchen are entering, and I know that someone who's won like eight awards at the Portland or the Oregon State Fair is entering, and I know that other people are entering, but I don't know who those other people are. So apparently there was some sort of Iron Chef at the Bite or whatever, but it just wouldn't oh. be like, yeah, but you know, we, we should have our there. own Iron Chef. Like, and the theme wasn't bacon because clearly all the people on Twitter and you know the people who hang out in beer and blog and stuff. I mean, that would be fun, right? Yeah, totally. I'm like, what couldn't you do with bacon? Yeah. Nothing. It's I mean, bacon. It's bacon. Well, it wouldn't be the secret. So there's a, um, I gotta tell you, there's this restaurant in Edmonton <clears throat> called Bacon. Really? And it's a vegetarian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. And But you can get anything on the menu with bacon. So it's vegetarian but with bacon? No, no, no. Like you can, you can, you can not have the stuff with bacon mm-hmm. and just have the vegetarian meal or you can have them add bacon to it. Well, I'm going to tell a mom story for a moment here. There was a point less than a year ago where my daughter decided that it was too mean to eat animals. She was really upset and she decided she just couldn't do it anymore. But she couldn't give up bacon. I'm telling you. And she lasted about eight days, I think, nine days (laughs) before she finally said, can't I just be a vegetarian that eats bacon? And I said, I said, no. I said, if you're going to kill the pigs then you have to eat the other animals too. Mm. And so she said, fine, fine, fine. I'll eat the chickens and the cows. <laughs> Just give me my bacon. Yeah, bacon's good. Bacon mm. is really, really good. Oh, yeah. bacon. Yeah, and I don't, actually, I don't even remember how the whole bacon thing started. It was like, oh, actually it was, uh, it was, I was having a shitty day at work mm-hmm. and I can swear now, right? Yeah, yes, you I can, can swear all you I want to. It's after right. hours. Phew. Uh, I, I was, I I was having, I was having show, a shitty so day at work, and um, I tweeted, I just said, uh, I'm going to quit my job and start a restaurant called Wrapped in Bacon, <laughs> where we'll take anything on the menu and we'll wrap it in bacon, mm. right? And you can bring stuff in and we'll wrap it in bacon, we don't care. And, uh, and everybody was like, oh, that's really funny, ha, ha, ha. And then like there was this whole big bacon thing going on, mm-hmm. and Verso chimed in and all these people, and... Uh, Next thing you know, everybody's like, like still to this day, I get like a link a week from people about cool bacon shit that they see that they say, oh, Scott wants to see this. And like, mm-hmm. you know, my arteries harden just like just seeing the links, you know, the uh, what was it? Bacon covered chocolate or and like you could get it was like at New Seasons. It wasn't mm-hmm. New Seasons, but it was like a in New the Seasons case, it was like, store. oh, wow, you know, like by the pound, you could get that. It's like, mm-hmm. Things I don't need by the pound. I have to tell you, when Miss Burroughs and I were on our way to lunch 2.0, where there were bacon wrap dates. And f- oh God, those bacon wrap dates. They were good. They, they did really good. well. That they was that well. was a Ford's on Fifth yeah, magic those treat. Were, and they those actually did good. that. That's not on their menu. They did that special because we we mm-hmm. just said, "Hey, can we get something with bacon?" On it? And they're like, "Well, what do you want?" I'm like, "We don't care. Just, just bacon. Get, just get it. <laughs> just do it." We, they're like, "We'll do it." We were on our way to come see you, and we were at uh, Finnegan's, the Little Finnegan's. And they had a bunch of different kinds of packing tape. And one of the packing tape they advertised was bacon packing tape. And we tried to buy it for you. And they were out of it. And we were really of course, we of were kind of were, hostile about it. Awesome. 
So they were out of the... That's why you don't own bacon packing tape, is because they were all out of it. I've gotten uh, bacon uh, uh, band-aids. Mm-hmm. I've, I've seen gotten, those. Uh, they had those stickers. at New Seasons. Um, my... my per- <laughs> I, I was at uh, McMinniman's Edgefield like two or three weeks ago, and somebody had a... Uh, I heart like a little heart mm-hmm. bacon sh- t-shirt on. And I, I was think like, I oh my god, that's awesome. About that. And then people tweeted back to me saying, "Yeah, that's cool and everything, but it's not as good as the I bacon bacon oh. t-shirt." Which I was just like, "Oh my god, that's that's so over the top. It's just it's <laughs> awesome." I do bacon bacon. I think at this point in the show, we said <laughs> we should say hello to our studio audience. We have uh, Cerno and Case Organic and Bron Patoyo in the studio audience. Hello, studio audience. Hello. Yay, studio audience. Do you guys bike over here? Well done. Wow, they rode their bicycles to our home. Oh, you didn't? Uh, no. All of that would be fine. Yeah, but almost. So now that the bacon talk is over. <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Normal, there's still bacon on your plate. Yeah, there's 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 a lot of it Don't still. Stop the bacon. That's right. That's right. Oh, there you go. Well done. <clears throat> Scott and I will share your bacon if you will not enjoy there it. There you go. There you go. Now, so so bacon's kind of a euphemism for something cool in tech, I think, right? It oh, is. Yeah. Isn't it? I thought it was just Something good. Mm-mm. Yeah, B-A-C-N. While you put the bacon in your mouth and you're answering the question, because <laughs> we do that around here. Woo-hoo. Well, he's just wait. You know? I taught him about the food in the mouth and the microphone and how important that is during after hours. It's a proud moment for me. Yeah. <laughs> mm, bacon. Um, are you are you referring to B A C N? B A C N. B A C N. From the tech perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Well, that's it's email that you'd like to get, but you don't want to get it right now. Hmm. So it's so like, it's not spam, but it's it's bacon. Yeah. But I want bacon right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, you know, I'll, like the uh, when Netflix sends you a, you know, you will have your movie on Tuesday email. Like, uh, you know, that's, that's not really spam, but, it's, I, but I don't really it's want it. It's important, but I don't need it at this very second. Right. Actually, what that should do is it should go into your inbox. Mm-hmm. Your inbox should go, oh, this is a Netflix email. No sweat. And you know what it's saying is their, their, their movie is going to be here on Tuesday. I'm just going to update their calendar for them. Right. Or, uh, wow, my phone's working. This is awesome. Did okay. you get a phone call? <clears throat> no, I'm getting texts. Oh, finally streaming okay. <laughs> it's like, wow, you're still on the internet. No. Um, oh, and then like friend requests, right? Like if I get a friend request from somebody from Twitter, mm-hmm. I would like my inbox to go, oh, okay, great. We know who this user is. You just accepted them or you followed them back. Then I'd like to follow them like on Facebook and Flickr and all these other places just once and for all. Not have to like... Go to those sites and enter yes. my Gmail password. That, is that what you're talking about, by the that way? Would open be source great. and open that ID. Would that would be fantastic. Know, let's do that. If my yeah. MySpace and my Facebook and my Twitter and my Shazow and my stuff, other stuff yeah, that I have, stuff. <laughs> my there's that other thing that I really like that I can't remember. And one the name big of right button now. to turn it all off. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. You know. No, but I, I'm always very confused because I'm always like, it's called using T-Mobile. I'm always or, very confused because oh, I like I'll go to Facebook and then I'll I'll realize I've been friends with someone on MySpace and on Twitter for you know 16 billion centuries in in tech time, and then I'll be like, oh my god, wow. they're on Facebook! I didn't know they were on billion. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that's like three months in real time. Yeah, yeah. Has it has anybody else? Maybe this is just my my whatever the age of the people that I went to high school with, but like literally in the last probably six months. I had a graduating class of like 600 some odd, you know, whatever. And literally half of them have showed up on Facebook in the last six months. What year did you graduate? Nine, uh, in the 90s. No, 90, <laughs> 90, 92. 92. Beaverson High School. You're older than I. Oh, there you go. So you're a local boy. Uh, well, you know, I was I, I, yeah. Ish. Yeah. You can't, I mean, you can't like, you can't, <laughs> unless, unless, you were, unless you were born on Oregon soil. Dr. You can't Norman. say you're really? like a, Really, Doctor Normal yeah, was we're born. Yeah, Oregonians are crazy about that. Okay. For real. Were you actually born in Portland, Doctor Normal, or just? Yes. Yeah. So then you're an Oregonian. You can, Not like, only was you I can born have in the Portland. sticker on your car. You can like say native and everything. Yeah. Like, He's never lived anywhere else. I know, but you could. That's the point. I could, but I don't because big, then big tattoo on your chest. People would think I'm crazy. Ooh, let's they'd tattoo like, Doctor Normal. Be, they'd be like, uh, awesome. 
Well, the moment I leave Oregon, people would be like, oh, what's that, what was that guy's problem? Maybe you can't know? leave. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, I know. Come it's on. true. Have you ever lived anywhere except for Portland? Uh, actually, <laughs> I have not, as a matter of fact. <laughs> really? And that's wow. the, yeah. See, a good and, interviewer and the, only asks questions she knows the answer yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, ask me the question. Scott, you can just sit on the couch. Have some bacon. Because the secret about this podcast is it's really about us. Got it. You facilitate. It. Um, no, the, and in comes the prosciutto. <laughs> oh, jeez. And the, the interesting thing about it is the Came time I, sh- I could have and should have left Portland, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. I'm glad I didn't ultimately was in the because early 80s me. when our economy had completely tanked in Oregon. And it's basically essentially when we meant, went from a forestry economy and moved into a high tech economy. And I resisted the urge to go down and make my way in LA, which eh, I don't even think so we're much. still a high tech. I don't think we ever made a shift to high tech. I mean, we're like, oh, it, it com- compared the I mean, at that mm. point, Oregon literally was the forestry industry. I mean, that was I know, but if you like look at the numbers, jobs. the numbers say that like there's 60,000 high tech workers mm, in mm. Portland, and there's like two million people. Well, here. it's the infrastructure though. It's not just the. It's what the industry brings in infrastructure too. I mean, if you I, go to no, Beaver, agree, agree, if you go to Beaverton and Hillsboro, yeah, 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 and look what happened to those and, yeah. cities, right? Um, you bring that infrastructure and the support infrastructure with you, um, but you know in like I said, like I like to say, you know, you used to go down to the Willamette R- River, River, Wiver, <laughs> the Wiver, that Waskoe Wabbit, um, <laughs> the Willamette River, and that whole South Waterfront was full of logs, literally oh, yeah, full yeah. of logs, and yeah. you know, and now it's like full of high rises, and there'll be more OHSU and I know it's crazy trams and light and condos rail condos, and it's a lot nicer now. I'm telling you, growing up here, I mean. Downtown was a shithole. Yeah, it really was. When I was a little I kid. Would, I, would, I mean, it yeah. was like you didn't go downtown, right? You crossed the Willamette and you were out in the a, suburbs. I have a question for you guys because Dr. Norm was born and raised here and I know that you moved here as a child. I moved all over California and Texas and by the time I was a teenager, I lived near San Francisco and as Scott and I discussed in the kitchen when I cut school, I would you then... You were uh, formerly Miss Corpus Christi. No, I'm no, no, Sorry. not Corpus Christi. <laughs> wow, really? even even stinkier and more horrible no, than minute. Corpus what, Christi was, was Baytown. Was it Miss Nude Corpus Christi or <laughs> Miss Corpus Christi? Because <laughs> I say it was that Miss implication nude. has knocked my video helmet on its <laughs> side. Go. I mean, really, Doctor Normal. I can't now, believe yeah. you talk about me being nude. No, really, when when I was a teenager, oh, surely not me. <laughs> I would no. cut if I cut school, mom and dad. You you know I did this. Um, I would leave and go to San Francisco for the day with one of my friends, or I'd take the BART. What did you guys do when you cut school? Did you guys come into Portland? Was it like, oh, I'm Fully. in downtown we, Portland? We, uh, we took the bus. Wait a minute. Scott is a God. very successful executive at a company. <laughs> he never cut school. Come on, no, kids. I totally, Look, no, actually, I, did, like I actually didn't cut school. I was like, okay. I was such a good teacher. If you, exactly. had a, if you had a day off, did you guys come in? Was it like, oh, I'm going into the city. I'm going oh, totally. downtown. We would, we would hop the, tri- the sorry, the TriMet, the buses. Mm-hmm. We'd hit the, the uh, Washington Square transfer station. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we'd just stay at Washington Square and like cruise the mall because that's a pretty sweet mall. The mall. Especially back in the 80s. Okay. And then, or we'd go downtown and then just walk around. That was it. And then we'd come back. And was it exciting to go downtown? Oh, was it my like, God. I'm it was like you're city. in a whole different world. Yeah, totally. Because with my kid, it's like, we're going downtown, and she's all excited. And I'm like, we're just going downtown. She's yeah. like, we're going downtown. We're going downtown. And I'm like, wow. Every child in the universe, if you tell them you're taking them downtown, it's suddenly exciting. doesn't matter what yeah, downtown yeah, yeah, it sure, is. Sure. It's like. Well, and it's funny because Portland, for a downtown, like, you know, I, tra- I, like, I travel a lot because I'm a huge executive. Right? Anyways. <laughs> Whatever. So I, forgot your I, cigar. I, travel, I travel a lot, right? Yeah. And, and so I go to these like pretty big cities, you know, New York and San Francisco, and, all mm-hmm. and Portland is just, is just like it's you know it's such a tame city. I've never I've never gone down a street and got oh my gosh like I'm a little nervous going down the street. Um, and the only the only place I've ever started to feel like that or like, gotten that sort of that hint of like oh this is almost a big city like Portland is Old Town, which is where our yeah. office is. Like if we go to Old Town like late at night, like when I have to go to the office late at night. Um, sometimes they'll just like be like tonight. crazies and, and you yeah. know, they'll be like, ah, you know, like 
can I get some change from you? And you're like, whoa, whoa. And they're like, okay, no problem. And then they're like really polite. They're like, really oh, nice, cute. crazy yeah. people. Old Town still has that charm, doesn't it? It really I mean, does. It's, it really all, it's the changed. soup kitchens. It's what, it's yeah. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's because you have to cross Burnside. And, so, and it's yeah. that little strip of Burnside right there in Old Town. The cabaret doesn't help. The soup no. kitchens certainly no. don't. No, they don't. So my favorite story of Old Town is back in the day. Back in, in the day when shit was real and you were hardcore. 80s, um, when we were, we were playing at the Roseland. Well, what was mm, nice. Starry Night? Well done. Right? Yeah. Big, you know, rock bands. Lots of Snoop spandex. Snoop played there a couple weeks ago. There oh, we yeah. Go. Back when lots Dr. Normal hair, had really makeup, fluffy, fluffy you know, hair. You remember those days spandex. back oh, yeah. in the 80s? You know, totally, the Scorpions yeah. and all those guys, you know? I still have all my tapes. There we go. And and rock so you'd be you wearing. Like her. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> So here you are, a band, and you're going, and this was when the Burger King was still open across the yeah, street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not parking. Which is still, like, yeah. oh, is, is, it, it, is it gone now? now? Did no, they it's did there. They, did they knock it down? No, it's still there, but yeah. they just, they turned, like, the seven the spots hell? that were behind it into parking. In Portland, right? You Monthly think parking. They just, like, like, nail that thing that and That thing is, like, prime, up, yeah. prime real estate. I don't know why they, they don't will, just they do will. something. I'm sure somebody's just sitting on it. But it's been years. You know, it's between your sound check and your set, and you're going across the street to the Burger King and you're wearing spandex and makeup <laughs> and, and lip tons gloss. of hair spray of in gloss. your hair and you're a guy and like all <laughs> these guys at the soup kitchen are looking like you're we're going to knife those guys. We're just going <laughs> to kill them. And he's just like, and my bass player turns to me and goes, don't worry, man. I'm carrying a blade. I was carrying a blade. I'm like, okay, no, the dude, funny thing is, I bet, I bet drummer, those, man. I bet, I bet all those guys at the soup kitchen are like, those dudes are going to blade us. Those yeah. guys are going to kill us. <laughs> exactly. It was scary, man. They're like, dude, those guys in the rock bands are just scary. And Satyricon was even scarier. That was the place I didn't want to play. And this is the place that, you know, Satyricon, like Kurt Cobain and, you know, everybody, all the, the greats, you know. And I was like, oh, man, this isn't like the Roseland. You're I don't so... have a drum throne stage You're up so in cool. 20 feet up or something like that. Yeah. This was back in the day. What's your back in the day story, Scott? What is my back? I don't have a good back in the day story. College days? You setting have up that a back OSL in the lab. day story. Back in the day <sighs> when no one liked bacon and I still liked it. <laughs> no, I don't, think, I don't think there's ever been a point where people haven't liked bacon. No, someone always loves bacon. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I got to think about that one because I'm sure I have a college back days. In the day. You know, while you think about your back in the day, yeah. I know that during the tech podcast, we had a question that was not asked. So, Cerno. Actually, I have one too. Oh, okay. Dr. Oh. Normal, so you ask the question in, first. Because she's going to kill me if I don't ask it. Something about touching your shoulders or something. <laughs> and, and, and I asked, what? Is he. No, no. I'm who's not asking? Say, who's uh, asking? I don't know. Who's asking? Uh, Geeky Girl Don? Hi, Don. Did she ask? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's one of those way back things. Uh, for back whatever reason, and we, we have the studio audience to prove it, I can't touch my shoulders. Oh, okay. I swear to God. Ow! Like, oh, so that ouch. hurts. Hey, it hey, literally hey, hurts. Don't do that. Yeah. I'm and it's not, like I, it's not like I'm like, no, like I, I can't even do it this way. And it's not like what? I'm like crazy buff or anything like you? that. It ha- it's just, I can't. Touch my shoulders. I'm sorry. Can you do it like this way? What? I literally cannot. I'm not kidding. You're but a mutant. I am. It's like, you know. And if I took off my shoes and my socks, you'd notice that my first toe off of the big toe, like, sticks out 10 feet is beyond. It, yeah. Is it webbed as well? It is not. But clearly there's some sort of correlation there. See, mine, no, mine sticks out too, and I can touch my shoulders. But it doesn't stick out as far as you claim no, yours mine's, does. Mine's nuts. Mine's like okay. Mine's mine's mutant ish. Like you, you sort of get that gag reflex when you see it, you're like. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just. Kidding. I'll be happy if you keep your shoes on around. Yeah, don't worry. Well, yeah. I would never think of taking yeah. my shoes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keep yeah, the so shoes. Can't touch and... my shoulders. Pretty excited about that. Wow. So I did kind of like yeah, stupid okay. human tricks. I well, can't touch my shoulders. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't make it to. Uh, I mean, the poor. Yeah. You know, that's sad. No, that was like a David I can't Letterman. do this, though. Oh, look, see, What's he can up? touch his yeah. opposite shoulders. That's nice. That you counts. can hug that's yourself. Good, yeah. So we should talk about um, what's fueling. No, uh, we should ask the studio audience uh, had yeah, questions. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. No? Drink time. Oh, drink time. We should talk about what's fueling after hours tonight. Do, do. Oh. 
This is a tradition on the show. I mean, Great. we have no, to I'm, do I'm this. Right. So what are we drinking tonight? I think it's a big surprise. This evening, Cammy Chaos and Scott Kavitner are drinking Dirty Dry Bombay Martinis. Original. That's what we drink every week. Not every week, but most weeks. But yeah. you're wearing a, a... I'm wearing a classic martini shirt. However, the classic martini is not dirty or dry. Okay. And and you're drink you're both drinking dirty yes dry, dirty dry. Mm-hmm. and I, I would recommend um, next time you try this yes a little aviation gin by the way I will aviation. try the aviation I'm gin it's it's it changed my life as far as martinis go I'm not kidding I believe you I used to be you. a Tangeray fan then I did some Bombay oh, yeah. and everything yeah. yeah aviation just you, you can't you just can't have different gin I mean see I, I, I find well, that this is great by the way oh, okay no no it's okay you're not insulting what, me what aviation proof is the aviation it's the same gin. it's the exact same like eighty or 94? Uh, it's 80. Okay, yeah, good. Because yeah. we don't, everyone, every time I go to a bar and I order a, a martini, they always want to give me the sapphire. And I'm always like, no, I don't want the sapphire. Right, right, right. Because. I'm a traditionalist. Uh, you know, I want to be able to walk upright. <laughs> well, no, I, I think an 80 proof gin makes a nice martini versus the yeah. higher. Now, if, if I want a uh, gin and tonic, then I want to go with the tangeray or something. Yeah, like yeah, you want something with a little, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why you do the tangeray. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you just get a Vaughn. Vodka tonic, right? Yeah. Then yeah. I'm not a vodka girl. And I'm drinking white, white table, table wine, wine by <laughs> Magnificent <laughs> Wine Company. Well done. I think they're out of Yakima, I believe. And so. uh, and Cerno is drinking some rum and juice that I made him. And uh, Case Organic and Brom, they got here after I made drinks. You'll get no so they have nothing. Bacon. They had, yeah, we did let them have some bacon. It's true. There's more bacon here. There's some. I'm gonna try Oh yeah. So we, aviation we have, gin isn't the stuff that they serve. So I I, I hear. I'm wondering. Well, I'm wondering if they have aviation that, gin at our liquor store down the street. Well, they do. They do. It's local. Okay. It's a local gin. It's very good. Um, I highly. highly sorry. Scott Kavitin <laughs> is currently gym, off mic. <laughs> Scott Kavitin <laughs> highly recommends the aviation gin. Off mic. However, mics. he's currently getting um, cheese. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's after pork hours. Product. Cracker so, <laughs> prosciutto cheese. That's a peppered delicacy. cracker. Oh, it's a pepper cracker. Yes, yeah, so it's a pepper cracker. So what about this? I, I hear the Green Dragon makes their own gin. Uh, they do. Oh, and that's also great. And that would be a great replacement for the Tangeray. It's the 12 Bridges gin. Uh, yeah. I've heard that. I need good. to get, you know, I always. Gin is not hard For to some make, reason, actually. I always no, get it's there. Not. It's actually, it's, and just, I don't, it's vodka with juniper berries. Juniper berries, juniper berries. yeah. yeah. I always get to the Green Worst Dragon, and I, I always forget had. that they have hard alcohol, and I always think, oh, they have beer, because it's beer, 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 yeah. and I don't drink beer, so I'm always like, oh, but you have hard cider, so I always order a hard cider, and then halfway through my hard cider, I go, crap, they have gin, I could have had a martini. Yeah, yeah I, I uh, uh, we just went to Sun River, spent a week in Sun River, we brought a bottle of that Oh, with darn. Us. We quite enjoyed the... Yeah. That's, that's a good way to spend some time. Yes. Worst, worst time I ever had, the, these this um, back... Years ago, with uh, uh, another relationship I was in at the time, with a different woman. You had another relationship yeah. before me. Um, and and these guys would have this uh, 1920s party. Like everyone would come dressed up. People would actually drive vintage cars to this party. Wow. Like you would dress up. I I, I I like I like brought a trumpet and I was like Richard Gere in the Cotton Club. You know, <laughs> I mean it was like, and they made bath. Wait, was Richard Gere in the Cotton Club? Yeah. He was the trumpet player. Anyway, but uh, uh, but that's not important now. Um, <laughs> but but um, they would make bathtub gin and, uh-huh. and homemade beer. And the bathtub gin was basically Everclear cut and then with yeah, yeah. juniper berries uh-huh. and stuff. Totally. Worst night yeah. I ever had yeah. in and my good life. For you. Yeah, what's up? Oh, I've never been able to feel my internal organs the next day, but I actually I was had to go to a rehearsal. Is that the time you out in the gig. bathtub? No, no, no. That was no. a different In time. the bathtub. That's one time you don't want to go under, right? Like, You know, someday this will all appear on the um, Dr. Normal, uh, Exploits of Dr. Normal podcast. The but, life um, and times of Dr. Exactly. Normal. But literally, I was like, my liver's here. There's a spleen over here. I mean, it was like, and I had to play the drums the proud the next moment. day. Oh, wow. That's yeah. great. So that's and was it perfect. like 90s, 20s drums? Or? No, it was like Straight some drums. Okay. Wizard of Oz or something. Some okay. musical I was playing time but it was bad i, I tell you stay away from the everclear even if it's uh, cut yeah tell it's me like it. although i will say that we do um uh the other cami and i my wife yeah uh we make a mean we should make um, it very clear that she spells her name with a k she does she and does i spell true. my name with a c like everyone else so we're two different and, people and i have to tell the story and she'd kill me if she was 
if she's awake right now, which I know she's not. But sweet dreams, Cammy. Right, which is that uh, when I first told her about Cammy Cass, I said, "Oh, you should follow Cammy Cass. There's another Cammy," and she's like, oh, "I don't want to follow her." She's like, "I want to be the only Cammy in Portland." And I'm like, "Well, I guess you can, you can." Very exactly. similar you can conversation. Be that in your own. <laughs> anyway. Over here, exactly. One of the first guests that we ever had on Strange Love. No, is she on Twitter a lot. Is, is oh yeah, she's she's a lurker, but she also she also tweets she tweets a lot. mostly okay. that that she's going to craft. Something. That's the most common thing yeah. I see no, 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 from no, her is real. that yeah, she's yeah. going to craft something, and or I'm always like, I wish I were crafting something because I like crafts, but I don't have time. She's a crazy crafter. I mean, yeah. like she actually literally has a she has a huge huge room for crafting. I mean, it's, it's wow. yeah. I have I have like a cubby mm-hmm. for my like for computer stuff, and then she has like a whole room. With beautiful windows and everything. I'm going to say something in her defense right now. You don't need that much room for a computer because a computer is kind of a contained unit. Well, and I, crafting I'm not takes home. a lot of space. I agree. I agree. And I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like not as at home. Is she a scrapbooker or is she like oh, a yeah. wood painter or what? What kind yeah. of crafting does she? Oh do? yeah. If it's a craft, she does it. Oh yeah, she's a huge scrapbooker. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like literally, like people come over and she'll leave the scrapbooks out, and like somebody will kind of like leaf through one just accidentally, and then she'll, oh my gosh, you, just, oh you, and then like all of a sudden it's like you're looking through 50 craft. I know. wish I had time for scrapbook. I, like I love it by the way. I love I all did. of them by the way because I actually love looking back like five. The scrapbooks years are ago. awesome. I have a, I have a scrapbook of my daughter's first. You know, like I don't know. I think I got up to like month 11 because I was very fastidious yeah and then uh, i don't know something happened and i stopped and now i make a page here or there I, i'm not as dedicated as i should be yeah what we've done instead is i i just take um hundreds of thousands of pictures of our kids mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just like literally just l- have the camera going and then you just sit and then let you them just, sit on your computer and they do nothing yeah pretty much that's yeah. what we do with our pictures no, no, no. We actually we uh, uh, we print them out, and she like will scrapbook them, or yeah. I put them on Flickr. Yeah. And uh, I saw some Flickr photos of your children over the week from the last week. Oh, nice. Yeah. Is that, you is know that, what's really funny is I actually had a Flickr photo of one of my kids, or actually both the kids, and they were they had their backs to me, and one was sitting on the ground, one was standing, and they were just buck naked. In the summer, <laughs> they just love being naked, and they run around. They're like four and two, and it's yeah. really cute. And I had uh, uh, the tags were like naked kid alert. Uh-huh. on Flickr, right? And I normally get like maybe 100 views on my photos. This one was like 2,500 views. Oh, uh, that's really scary. Did it's they edit, gross. did they, what was the, they've started totally now, gross. they've started now to censor things on Twitter. So, no, I, or, I, I not made on that Twitter, one. I made excuse that, me, I made Flickr. that photo private. Good, yes. So those of you who are trying to find it, yeah. no. if you find it, let me know, then I need to fix that. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, the thing is, is like people like post their family pics on Twitter and all that stuff, and the kids and stuff, and, and it's like all of a sudden these things start winding up on different bizarre sites totally, and things like that. Totally. And as a parent, you got to kind of like be like, oh, well, hang on a second, you know, I gotta. I mean, if you you're out there with your picture or whatever, that's that's your responsibility. But you know, your I, kids. I, I will say that all my Flickr uploads have finally it did pay off in the form of a two hundred fifty dollar check from Playboy. Really? Yeah, for reals. Really? Yeah, okay. They, they love naked kids. No, oh, what? Kidding. Oh, jeez. For real, so no, for real. It did actually turn into. Uh, I I was in Austin, Texas, for uh, South by Southwest. This is when your I, picture, right? This is one a picture that I took. No, okay. no, it's a picture that I took. I, I went to this place called the um, uh, the Salt Lake, and it's outside yeah, of Austin. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Famous barbecue place. Yeah, yeah. Famous, yeah. and it's Great. and it's really barbecue. funny because it's it's a dry county. So you have to bring your own booze. So mm. you to, in a cooler, you have to bring your in own booze. Austin. I didn't know that. And it's uh, it's probably like probably thirty minutes outside of Austin, and it's all these big uh, long like um, picnic tables inside of this huge you know like Adobe building, mm-hmm. and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I went in and uh, I had my camera with me, and I started taking some pictures like from behind the counter or from mm-hmm. in front of the counter. And they're like, "Oh, hey, do you want to get behind the counter and take some pictures?" And I'm like, "You know, hell's yeah, I do." And uh, so I took all these. You know, I thought they were great pictures. And uh, they were awesome. It was like the Les Schwab of, uh, you know, barbecue places. Right. It's, yeah. it's five minutes Schwab. from the grill to your mm-hmm. table, right? Mm-hmm. And they're super friendly, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, well, somebody from Playboy, they did a, they did a whole expose on uh, barbecue joints in the U.S. And the Salt Lake was one oh, of them. Oh, there you go. They needed, the Salt Lake was one of the top ones, and they needed to yeah. send a photographer out. Well, one of their guys went on to Flickr and found, because I tagged it, and I had a bunch of, like, really high page views on my stuff and so they found one of the pictures and they said ah oh, we want to buy that 
I'm like, okay, how about a, you know, and, and we'd crossed emails and I said, how about a hundred? And they're like, we usually do $250. And, and so they're like, oh, lucky you, you got $250. I was Woo-hoo! like, yeah. Anyways. You're one lucky bastard. It was you? really, really I mean, lucky. You know, and now you have an excuse to buy Playboy for the rest of the Actually, it's more, ex- I have time. an excuse to buy a t-shirt that says, I'm a photographer for Playboy. Yeah. Exactly. Top that. So, so it Keep actually that, made baby. it in the magazine. There's. What's that? The, so the picture. Oh, I got a little credit. Made... Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. What were you shooting with? Wow. Uh, what? It was, what? It was actually is the same Canon that uh, A. Hockley shoots with. It's Canon 40D. 40D. So that's a, that's the higher end EOS, right? So that's yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice. It's like a, it's, it's like nicer a, than my camera is what Doctor Normal. No, I don't saying. know. That's what I'm asking. It's nice. It's a, it's a it's a larger frame. Oh, it's, it's a 35 uh, millimeter frame. No, no, no. It's, it's digital, but it's yeah. it's still 1.2. It's not the full frame, oh, okay. like a like okay. a 5D. And uh, um, it's a good camera. It's really good. It's like it's a 10.5. 10.5. Okay. 10.5 megapixels. And, yeah. But oh, I yeah, can do. I I, with my favorite part is like switching to the crazy high speed mode and doing yeah. Yeah, 6.5 frames a second in raw is just yeah. Yeah, that's I'm gonna nice. stop now. Fancy pants. Okay. Why don't you? Eat the, I have to say, I feel like I'm talking about a car. Scott's been holding yeah. a cracker in his hand Four for like one, ten minutes now. It's sad. Maybe longer. He has a cracker. <sighs> I know, with, but I don't want to eat it in front. Ah. Just, this, so let's have the. Let's I'll have talk the for a moment. I'll talk. I'll talk for a moment. You go ahead and eat your cracker. I'm going to talk. Talkity talk talk. We have a studio audience, and I know that earlier, the studio audience had a question for Scott Gavitan. If you could make that question as long as possible, we'd appreciate it. Sir, no. As long as possible. Yes, make it a long question. You mentioned that the security that the uh, how do you say that vidoop vidoop vidoop. Unless you're asking Miss Burroughs, and then it's Vadoopa Loop. Uh, yeah, are you going to change the name to Vadoopa Loop? Because that's that's really kind of the going going thing right now. Yeah, so. uh, check our site on April first. There we go. <laughs> but when you were saying it, take, you took three pictures, and that was going to be your password. The thing that came to mind was the movie Johnny Mnemonic, where he takes mm. three pictures oh, to yeah. store the data in his head. Oh, well, he encrypts. Oh, he uses it to that encrypt. One. He you don't remember do. Johnny Mnemonic? I don't. I don't. Was uh, Keanu Reeves? Oh, it was Keanu Reeves. And I Udo Kier. Say, God, I was. That would be it. William Gibson. <laughs> yeah, it was a William Gibson novel that they turned into a movie, and and it was he would take these three random images from the web or from TV or whatever. I think he used to. Yeah, I think he, it was TV at the time. If I remember, it was to encrypt. Encrypt the data. Or it was to decrypt, encrypt the data to so that, as a decryption and then he would scan the the three images and send them to the buyer, and then they would download yeah. them, and that would be how they would but get the information from the their mind. Facts, but it, then they burned it and cut the guy's hand off with the little. Eh, it was Udo Kier and and, and uh, what's it sounds name? like the like Chuck Ice now that show Chuck. I like that show. I love that show. That's a good show. What's what is Chuck? It? Chuck, it's on NBC. Chuck's brain turned into a computer, basically. He downloaded too much information. Oh, oh, my oh so it's like, kind of like Johnny. It, it really yeah, is. it is. It's totally. a lot like it, only with only a really hot chick. Yeah, a really hot chick. With and, blonde and, uh, hair. Adam, Adam Baldwin, no relation to the Baldwin brothers. I really? like Adam Baldwin. Really? What was I watching the other day that had Adam Baldwin in it's it? It's like Firefly, isn't it? Oh, Firefly. Yeah, yeah, it was Firefly I was watching. I was like, oh, it's the guy because I watched he Chuck first. He was also uh, a crazy racist in uh, Full Metal Jacket. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. yeah. I love that movie. Well, Great movie. Kubrick fan so yeah so when you were movie. when you were a kid did you like read a lot of science fiction were you the geeky kid or were you just i mean yeah, I was, what motivated you <clears throat> what's <clears throat> sorry what's really funny is i was actually the fat kid who got beat up all the time yeah true story and uh you and me both <laughs> and but what happened was like I, so I, I got beat later. up i got beat up for a long time and then uh i literally i remember getting like oh it was crazy anyways until i was probably in fourth or fifth grade and then i just shot up and I was huge. Like, I was this big guy. I literally was this tall as I am in sixth grade. And how tall are you now? Like, six foot one. Wow. Change, probably wow. something like that. Anyway. Play some ball? Play some ball, kids? I did. I did. I played a lot of basketball, <laughs> yeah. actually. And uh, any, anyway, so <clears throat> very. it was interesting because I went through that sort of being on the, the, the shit end of the stick, you know? Right. And so from then on out, I just, I you know, I was mean to everyone. No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. I I, I just I, I always whenever like I today. saw somebody like getting beat up and all that kind of stuff I always like, like you know, mm-hmm. would mm-hmm. not take that shit. But what what got you into the geeky world? 
Um, what motivated you? know, it's you? funny. I was in... I was in We're I not going to talk about beating people up because I like to talk about beating people <laughs> no, no, up. No, no, no. <laughs> I went to college. I was undeclared. Uh, I went to OSU. Once a beaver, always a beaver. Mm-hmm. And uh, that'd be Oregon State University, not Oklahoma State University. Exactly. <clears throat> Wait, yep. is Oklahoma State University beavers as well? No, they're no. not, but they're also they're orange always, and black. Yeah. Really? It's crazy. And OSU. Yeah, and I got off the plane crazy. and it like freaked me out. I was like, orange and black. Wait, what? Yeah, Anyways, exactly. Did I land in the right airport? Anyways. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, yeah, what did I do? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I needed a summer job. Something about a Linux lab or something? No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That was like way after even though. Yeah. But I, I, so, I mean, how I got started was I needed a summer job. And I started doing, I literally was pushing the cart around for the computer support team, mm-hmm. like picking up computers and stuff. Oh, wow. And pretty soon they were like, uh, like I was like, they, they, I'd bring them in and I'd already know sort of what the problem was. And I'd tell the guy and he'd mm-hmm. be like, mm-hmm. wow, so you like know what's wrong with this. I was like, yeah, I probably could have fixed it there, but like I'm supposed to bring it here. And they're like, well, okay, right. great. You know, we can, you know, charge whatever we can charge anyway. And uh, anyway, so from there I went into computers and. Changed my major to computer science, and I have a BS in CS, which mm-hmm. is pretty sweet. Oh, cool. So, cool. Bullshit in CS. It's pretty funny. So, so it's just, you kind of just got the computer bug? Yeah, and then, and then I left the university, uh, graduated, lived in Seattle, and lived in San Francisco, lived in a couple different places. Went to, went to the UK when I was studying, actually, for a while, and then, and then came back um, to the university and actually started the Open Source Lab. Oh, okay. So it was after you left. After I left and came back, yeah. yeah. And actually, I'd come back with a bunch of like I'd, I'd learn a bunch of stuff about Linux and all these mm-hmm. other things, mm-hmm. and showed up at the university, and um, they were a big Unix shop, which mm-hmm. is like, you know, thou shalt buy one server a year, mm-hmm. and thou shalt, you know, <clears throat> and and that was how it worked. And the first year I was back, I spent twenty five percent of my annual budget. And replaced everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God, I did it. <laughs> we had another mic. I'm a, I'm a big hand waver, and so like, I keep though? hitting the the mic. It's pretty. Scary. I'm a hand waver too, and I've had to train myself for the podcast oh, you're like to way not out here. not use the hands or to talk with the hands way out in front. Um, Scott keeps hitting the microphone. He's a he's like an Italian hand talker <laughs> with a martini. Yeah, yeah there with a martini. Luckily, uh, the martini's not hitting the microphone. So, is there anything interesting you did at Amazon.com? At Amazon, I, you know, um, I, I throw that out for Rick Tarosi. Oh no, no, no. I yeah, just, yeah. Did chat uh, I, I was did like, oh yeah. Wait, wait. No. Who, Rick? Your time. Rick, in, who? Well, we have to mention him for the podcast. No, I don't know anyone named Rick. We love those silicon floors <clears throat> links, don't we? Silicon <clears throat> floors? <sighs> Not familiar with this guy. Uh, who? Who? Rick? Rick? Okay. Tur- so Tur- anything interesting? Turquoise? I mean, what? was it was it just kind of a, a kind of an out of college job or or was uh, it? Oh yeah, kind of, but. So I was, um, what did I do that? So I was in the uh, the teams that ran the distribution centers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And these distribution centers were insane. So I remember going to, um, it was in Kentucky, and it was like a 700,000 square foot um, oh, yeah. facility. I mean, that's big. Warehouse, right? yeah. And it was it was originally a Fruit of the Loom. Um, I swear <laughs> to God, it, it was a Fruit of the Loom. They made underwear in there. Well, back in the day, they used to sell a lot of underwear. Not so much anymore. No, no, no. Well, Everyone they used goes to, they used to make it. Everyone goes commando, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They used We're to make it in the U.S., but you know. now it's, it's cheaper to make it. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, so, so Amazon had bought the facility, and they'd converted it. All those it Olympians was, coming back with tons of underwear, trust me. <laughs> what the hell? I don't even know what to say to Okay. That. I think but, he's lost uh, it. I think he's he has, it. clearly, clearly. Uh yeah. Anyway, so it, it was amazing. Amazon like, underwear. The way that the way that you would do. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, there was a lot of technology involved in doing yeah. this stuff, and it would be sort of like, I don't know. I, I can't even explain. It, but what I remember one time we were there, and there's all these conveyor belts that are flying over you, and they have product on them, and all the product is supposed to go in these certain bins, mm-hmm. right? And the power went out. Oh wow! And so just product is flying everywhere. <laughs> Just shit is flying everywhere. Really? Like f- PlayStations and <laughs> Oprah's Book of the Month and sh- and and it's like, and then like we're like ah oh! and then it's like you know you, you you duck and cover and then the lights come back on and you're like 
Oh shit! <laughs> we have to like we have to wipe everything out, like all the orders out yeah. that we have just initiated. This is like some what, like one of those. Is this why my Knox is this why my Amazon orders get delayed? No, no, no. They're actually they're much better now. But I mean, like this then is like it was an like, I Love Lucy episode, right? Yeah. You know the chocolates. Are it, no, oh, 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 for real. Oh. You're all taking underwear and playstations in your in your coats. And, and like, it was oh, God, and it was oh, until we until we figured that out that everybody had to wear hard hats, not the voodoo part. Oh, hats, oh the there you go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. And wow. Yeah, Vampires it was, it was pretty, get pretty crazy stuff. But I mean, absolutely amazing, sophisticated technology. I remember yeah. we had this problem with um, doing what we called SLAM, which was Ship, Label, and Manifest. And you had this sort of this this conveyor belt that was maybe like 12 feet long. And in that, a box would roll over that conveyor belt and it would weigh it and scan it with lasers and figure wow. out the size. And then it would phone back to Seattle, check the latest uh, USPS shipping rates, mm-hmm. And then figure out um, what the shipping would be, print the label, and then stamp it on. All in that twelve feet. And wow. the problem was, is in Kentucky, the the connectivity. It's always we, in Kentucky. The Kentucky, the connectiv- the, <laughs> the connectivity that we had, which was Kentucky connectivity. Anyway, right. <laughs> uh, was was uh, sucked. So the round trips were too long. That the label was it would, actually using the pots lines the phone lines like a like no a dial it, used, up, it was, was it, it was like, like it was T1 isdn or, or we had t1s and stuff yeah. like that but still the latency was just too long yeah and uh, sure enough we we'd have all these labels back up and it would be stamping on shit that wasn't supposed to stamp on we'd be sending <laughs> stuff all over the place anyway I mean, it was this is this is way back in 99 this is years right years, okay. when they were but, starting this is like you yeah. know a completely different century yeah for reals yeah <laughs> turn of the century stuff anyways it was, it was really fascinating problem so it sounds like you had like lots of fun at Amazon, you know, stuff oh, flying yeah, everywhere great. Great. and sending PlayStations to Grandma who ordered like ten <laughs> Fruit of the Looms <laughs> exactly. or something. You know, <laughs> right? Like, no, no, no. It Grandma was, it was wanted totally a Granny bra, and exactly. instead she got a PlayStation. Exactly. Fantastic. Yeah, it was it was totally fun. I had a I had a great time. Learned a whole bunch of stuff. Um, actually, one of my favorite stories. Um, you have to let me tell this story because it's a really good story. But no, you I can't. I came into no I came <laughs> into the data we center. We hate stories. And it was right after um, Thanksgiving. And it was Thanksgiving is like right when you know the the big uh, shopping yeah, crunch. Yeah, absolutely. And we had this like online graph that would show like the millions of dollars that we were doing per minute, and it was crazy. So it's like okay, downtime costs us serious, you know, MF and dollars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I we started to notice these problems with the the front end machines. We had these literally 120 servers. This is again back wow. in '99. That's still a lot for you. For, you well, know. there were 120 servers, and the way that they did it is every single server was a complete instance of the website right right and back in 99 a server with eight gigs of memory and a boatload of like memory yeah. uh, mem- uh, disk and all this stuff was a, a shit ton of money yeah and what was happening was these servers would just turn off mm-hmm. we just randomly they would turn off and so i came into the data center and the guy from digital who was actually from compact because they'd just been acquired by mm-hmm. compact and hb anyway comes to me and he says uh, hey we, we, we got a problem and I'm like, oh, okay, all right, what's the problem? Yeah, like, yeah it turns out um, <clears throat> all the servers are uh, screwed. <laughs> so um, we're going to have to, we're going to, we're going to try and fix it uh, with software because we think we can. But it's like this, it's a Friday. Uh, and the guy <laughs> who's in charge of that is in Germany and he's asleep. <laughs> so it's probably going to be Monday. Um, and so, so sort of as a team, we're all sitting there going, okay, we have 200 of the smartest people in the world, mm-hmm. like managing our infrastructure, but we can't, we, we're not in charge of our own destiny. Mm-hmm. And this mm-hmm. was the great catch, by the way. <laughs> uh, th- this, was the, this was one of the things I think that helped, uh, this was one of the events that helped Amazon, I think, sort of say, okay, we need to look at open source solutions mm-hmm. because if it's mm-hmm. broken, we have 200 really smart people, mm-hmm. they can fix it themselves. And so gotcha. we had to wait right. for the vendor to solve the problem. And so we literally had to wait till next week, and we had a bunch of outages, and that would cost dollars. And, and is that uh, actually kind of your or one of your moments of thinking about open source? And oh hell yeah! Oh my god, okay, are you like, kidding me? Yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, we totally. Just like somebody, like ourselves. we, we yeah. know the people who can fix this stuff. We they're on yeah. staff. Yeah, they can do this. And and you know, time and time again since then, uh, I've had problems with software or with you know whatever, and I've gone on Google and found a solution, or just like you know tweeted or done something, and mm-hmm. people have a solution for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's 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 a combination of the lazy web and you know. So are operating systems dead? I mean, as far as a commercial enterprises our operating system no i don't think so at all like our <clears throat> good friends in redmond washington you know 
<laughs> well, let, let's let's bear in mind that they they had their best quarter ever. Yeah, they, they sell boatloads of software. They're a money making machine. They, let's let's think about but, this. But they, they in two thousand and fifteen, will they be a money making machine? Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, uh, may, maybe not to the extent that they are today. They'll differentiate. Um, they're they're kind of keeping up with the Joneses and Google and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, in Microsoft's DNA has it inside of them to <laughs> it's kill or be killed. Mm-hmm. Okay, make make no you know. Well, yeah. I, I I know a lot of Microsoft people. I've worked with a lot of them, um, and, and I get along with them individually. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the company itself is kill or be killed. Period. Damn you! Mm-hmm. It really is. I'm, I just well, like, ever I since the Lotus One Two Three days. Literally, I mean that's that's that, that was their DNA. I mean that's it was like, what was it? Windows doesn't. Uh, how did how did it go? It, they had a they had a, 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 a supposedly a. Um, a mantra that you know the OS doesn't ship it until you know Lotus doesn't run or something like that. I know I'm messing that up, but you know that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Let's let's talk about less <laughs> geeky things. Let's talk yeah, about we're back to geeky. Yeah, let's, let's talk, talk about, about Portland. Let's Great. talk about the fact that you wore fancy shoes on my show. I do. I wear it's about I, time. I you know Melissa would appreciate this. Melissa Lyon would appreciate. It. She's the first guest who ever wore fancy shoes on my show on Melissa purpose. Lyon. Do I know her? I know her, don't I? Wait, wait, no, maybe, was it, maybe I have the name wrong. Melissa Tiger? <laughs> are, <laughs> you, are you messing with me right now? You don't know Melissa Lyon? I must, I, uh, I'm going to shut up now. Back, yeah, I totally know her. Back Fence PDX. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, 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 yeah. I've got some Come emails. It's the guy at Bone. You no, know I was it. supposed to go to uh, <laughs> the last Back Fence, but we, like, we were supposed to do date night and it didn't work anyways. Oh, you know what? Cammy would have liked it. No, I'm, I know, we're, and we're gonna try, but we couldn't get like a sitter, and it was oh, you know, oh, 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 yeah, no sitter. Because yeah, we got the. Florida I had a too, great so babysitter that night. His name was Doctor Normal. <laughs> he stayed well home done. with the baby, and um, and I went out and had a date night with Miss Burroughs. Oh, nice. Yeah, well we done. sat with Rick Trozzi and we listened to the stories, and it was very oh, that's lovely. Great. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was good times. It's good. good I have to check that out. But yeah. she wore anyway, fancy so shoes, and I noticed shoes. that you have lovely shoes this evening. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. It's really funny. I actually. Um, I don't know. It's weird. Like I live in Portland, and I actually am a huge like t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. But mm-hmm. like I, I like dress up more than. Where do you shop? Where's a good place to shop? Um, you know that's a great I'm lost question. for men's clothes. It's just I'll like... tell you what, you're gonna laugh. Um, and actually, I got a couple. T- I got a tip today from uh, M.T. Richardson, who's a crazy. He like he came into my office today. He's gonna kill me, but he's up at uh, Penny Arcade. Thing. Hello, M.T. Richardson. Yeah. And he says, uh, he's like, oh man, I'm so excited. The Gap has a uh, uh, big, big sale on vests. And I was like, did you just come into my office <laughs> exactly. and tell me that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, on vests. Cool. I, I bought a vest once about eight years ago. Did you get a vest when I met you? Know, like you you got to understand. Twice. Is that that vest? Is that, that, that vest it. that you had when I met you? The, yeah. the gray mm. sweater vest? The metrosexual, yeah. bizarre vest. You yeah. have to understand. Like, I've M- never seen it on you. <laughs> Michael Richardson wears a sport coat a lot of the time to yeah. write software. And what for reals? Yeah, he's a, he's a reedy. He's a reedy, right? Oh, exactly. And this is that's what East everybody Coast. does. East Coast, right? Yeah. What I, no, he's from the East no, Coast. No, he's not. He's from Idaho. It doesn't matter if you go to Reed. You can wear a sport coat. It's yeah. okay. Anyways, and he's a political Why science major and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and I will say Coast. he's actually one of the one of the best developers I've 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 seen in Portland. Yeah, a long different time. strokes he's for different folks. Super, super. Now I gotta guy. say, one of my first boyfriends ever, like when I was in junior high school. I went out with this guy for like two weeks. He was my boyfriend for like two weeks. He wound up going to Reed College. He's Good. gay. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as we mentioned, Reed College is just down the street here. Okay. And, and so you were saying the best place to buy clothes is oh. a men's warehouse. Oh. No. Uh, no, you know, it's Costco. Funny. I actually, you're going to, you'll we'll totally laugh. Okay. So um, what I'm wearing tonight is a. Uh, I need to buy some clothes. Man. This is a uh, <laughs> Eddie Bauer. Bauer. Oh, oh, we wrinkle, love Eddie Bauer. Wrinkle resistant, stain resistant <laughs> shirt. We love Eddie okay, Bauer. Okay, so let me, let me just tell you a little something about this. So I travel a lot. Yeah. And what I can do with this shirt is I can actually, I can wad it up into yeah. a ball. Yep. Put it in my pocket. Fly for like 10 hours. This is why I asked. Take it out. Put it on a hanger. Put it into the uh, into the bathroom. Turn mm-hmm. on the shower for yeah. like 10 minutes. Steam yeah, yeah. up the room. I like the steam, the steam uh, wrinkle free steam. For real. And then, and then you take it and you go like this, go whoosh, you yeah. shake it out. You can't see this if you're listening, but like I'm doing <laughs> shaking motion. Thank you. Excuse and, me. Uh, and it's it's good as new. 
And I just, you can't put a price on that. And this, I've actually spilled cups of coffee. Not on, I'm wearing a black shirt right now, so like you can't yeah. tell. But I've had other shirts that I've spilled cups of coffee on, and it like literally just dances off onto my jeans, which is a different story, but whatever. <laughs> well, this is, but this is, <laughs> jeans are this, jeans. This is, this is the futuristic actual application of nanotechnology is men's business wear it's like wadded up spill coffee on it or whatever yeah, you still real. look okay right. when you're in a business meeting i mean it's exactly. like you know what i mean it's like see yeah. it's just sort of easy. re re and then outside of itself. outside of eddie bauer i shop with outlet mall for i real. love the outlet Where? mall i do outlet? the outlet oh, yeah. mall yeah. i love them woodburn we don't have to pay tax there that's right Mm-hmm. That's right. Sorry. Well, you live it's in you live in Oregon. You know, have to it's pay a joke. Yourself. It's a joke. Yeah. See, that's why I think that Miss Burroughs and uh, Martin Vayner come to oh, it, to Portland. Of course, because they don't have to pay taxes <laughs> here. Scourge, Washington comes scourge of the down earth. Here. Stinking yeah. Washingtonians yeah. coming. If you're into living our in Portland. Vancouver, you're coming down to Oregon yeah. to buy. I mean, you buy buy groceries in soap. Portland. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Anything. Oh, I need crackers. I better go to Portland. Unless you're in Portland and you want an antihistamine and then you have to go to Vancouver. No, then we got to go the other way because, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're all making meth. We're we all have making meth. Holds. <laughs> Bunch yeah. of meth. Oh. By the way, I wanted to compliment you guys on the, on your bathtub. It's huge. Our bathtub for, for is rather. Meth. Yeah, it is. We have a big bathtub. Oh, okay. Actually, I haven't seen your yeah. bathtub yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. We have a, like a big 19. What, what, 40s. 1940s actually. bathtub. Yeah. yeah. We need to get it 1920s finished. house. 1940s bathtub needs to be refinished. That's right. Anything nice you see in that this house? That means somebody 20 years into this house said, oh, we need a new bathroom. Yeah, we, bathroom we, we, we need a new bathroom. We know Correct. that specifically awesome. because we've been inside the walls. <laughs> we have we've been inside the walls. The remodel. It's very, very yeah. frightening. There have been at least two remodels in our bathroom. Well, three now that we've worked on our bathroom. Exactly. Yeah. So anything nice you see here? Anything like a light fixture or a wall or yeah. anything you go, that's really Pretty. That's nice. Anything that's school. not craptastic. Thank you. We, we, <laughs> thank, we you. Take, thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> yes, exactly. Anything nasty? That was the other guy. If you look at the walls in our living room and you notice that they're smooth and pretty and look like plaster, it's because I and my mother and my Actually, friend spent days stripping the walls of. We previously had this discussion. You know, three layers of wallpaper and like twenty-seven layers of paint. You, okay, uh, twenty-seven might be an exaggeration. You and your wife, Cammy. Um, I think it was it. Mrs. I was thinking, Kavitin. Yes, Miss Miss Mrs. Kavitin. Mrs. Not Ms. Not Miss. I said Mrs. Mrs. Kavitin. Um, when you were in Corvallis, I think you lived in an old house and did some remodeling and we did and stuff. Yeah, we actually lived in a house. Um, it was actually <laughs> it was a one bedroom house that had been converted. They'd added a garage. And and taking the crawl space above it and turned that into a bedroom. Mm-hmm. So when we bought it, it was a three bedroom house with one <laughs> bath, <laughs> but barely. Yeah. And uh, uh, and three sides each each side of our fence except for the street were all floodplain. Oh, nice. Wow. There were so like we like if you lived in any of those other houses, like you could not get flood insurance and it was actually a big deal down there because we had like a lot of floods in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a good time. And then we actually bought another house. In Corvallis, it's just a beautiful house. Mm-hmm. I actually wish we could have that house here in Portland, actually. It was a beautiful house. Anyways. Wow. Yeah. Kind of it wasn't like- a big... It was a tiny house. It was a three-bedroom, uh, one-and-a-half, two-bath, actually, is what it was. But we had half an acre, and we had a huge shop and a great, awesome space for nice. a garden and stuff. And it was good. And now you sort of live in a more modern... Now we live in a the- hill. Yeah. But with more a- wait, wait. amenities, right? He said oh, the magic yeah, yeah. word, though. Yeah. I have to ask. You're an avid gardener. Really? Uh, I read that. I read I, it. I, I, I am. Although we didn't Seriously? garden this year, I'm so bummer. I'm so yeah. bummed about it. No, we we uh, the last um, our last house we had uh, about a quarter of an acre for the garden, and uh, we do everything. We did uh, raspberries, pears, apples, corn, squash, uh, melons, bunch of different kinds of melons. Uh, I did like ten or fifteen kinds of peppers, mm, uh, peppers. tomatoes, um, carrots, onions. Uh, flowers, all kinds of different flowers, all kinds of different stuff. See, loved, my, just loved it, loved it. Loved my it. gardens previously have gone very well, and this year, no. <laughs> I've had, no, you know, I've it's, had it's, it's, we haven't four had, we regular haven't good, tomatoes been a crazy and like year. a couple of baby tomatoes. We haven't had a tomatoes. lot of good heat. We didn't have no. a good heat in uh, in July and mm-hmm. in August. I've had one of, squash and a handful of tomatoes. It's and if been you look pathetic. At if you look at people's corn in town. If you drive around and you're mm-hmm. looking at people's corn. I was going to plant corn this year, but I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, it wasn't hot enough. It just didn't get hot enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sad. It's a funky, funky Not that year. I know. I, gardening is not my 
green no. thumb. No, Dr. Not Normal my... looks normally, I love not this year. fresh garden. Not this year. Stuff, normally, he looks at me. my garden, and he is very happy. <laughs> you know, and he eats my zucchini, and he eats my... This year, I looked at it and went, not so good, huh? <laughs> and he went, did you do something wrong, exactly. honey? I didn't say that. Because you did, you did. Not going so Dr. well. Dr. Normal says, no, he didn't, but he did. He said, did you did you forget to water in your garden? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I nice. specifically said, nice. is this like... You know, we're busy with the podcast and everything, and it's like, the garden's not going so well, or what? I listened to Lilo and Nopo, and she told me not to water my tomatoes anymore. All right. That's I true, actually. You, you want to, uh, starving them of water actually makes them produce the fruit. You know, I noticed that last year we went to Disneyland for a week, and I came back, and I, my tomatoes were not doing well, and I came back, and all of a sudden I had, like, tomatoes everywhere. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. They just want to be abused. Last year was a time. Well, otherwise, killer otherwise killer what tomatoes. they do is they continue to do all the, the green foliage. They're like, yeah. oh, sweet, I'm getting water. I'm going to keep doing this because I know the water's going to run out and then they're going to yeah. have like a gazillion. Anyway. So it's yeah. like grapes, right? It's like wine grapes and mm-hmm. stuff. You, it is. You just you treat them like them. crap so that the vines dig way down mm-hmm. into totally. the crappy earth and make great grapes. So there you go. So Gardener, we bacon lover, extraordinaire. Open up a question to the studio so audience. So the studio audience has a question for us? Is this true? Yeah, I think so. They're looking at us like we're crackheads. Oh, no, no, no. But I know they have a question. I know Amber has a question. She always does. Look at you, Amber. Amber, ask Be your question. Be careful of Amber's questions. They're always tricky. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> She'll save it for the hazelnut tech talk. Yeah, she's she's just waiting. Have they had you on hazelnut tech talk? Not, Not yet. Not I'm yet. looking forward to it. It's, oh, it's yeah, coming, yeah. though. See, they're just, they don't want to ask any of the good questions now. <laughs> Brom, do you have a question? Have we asked the uh, bacon question yet? Which bacon uh, question? Which bacon question? I heard you made bacon this weekend. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be making He's bacon making. this weekend, making Tell us about the bacon. Yeah, so I went to uh, Gartner's. Uh, Gartner's Meats out on like Meat. 74th and Killingsworth. And it's I got to tell you, it's like. You know, it's like uh, it's like Veganopolis for meat people. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. What? Veganopolis Vegan- for meat people. Oh, okay. How okay, can you be more it. clear than like that? You, you yeah. go in and it's like you just it's like every kind of meat in every kind of form, and they'll do anything. Is he the only want. guy who makes like the 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 vegetarian vegan references in regards to meat? I, totally, I mean, it's, totally, it's totally. Hey, wait, so, wait, no, so, no. Last week we had a we had a vegan on the show, right? And this week we have Scott Kavitin. <laughs> A, yeah, that's right. That's right. Anti vegan. I yeah. don't know. The what an, is, I'm not the anti. I'm not against what? vegan. Well, like like it's our six like year old me. would say, you are an omnivore. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And omnivores are good. I uh, like being get, an omnivore. To give you an example of like what it's like at Gardner's, um, the guy was like one of the guys doing the butchering back there, way back there. Uh, as a playful jest, um, sort of like pulled the heart out of something and threw it at one of the people, one of the attendants. Oh and she Lord. laughed and she grabbed it and threw it back at him. And it was like, she threw it so hard that it actually stuck to his body. <laughs> oh my <laughs> word. And they were all laughing and cackling. And I was like, oh my God, I this is like... Did, this didn't turn you into a like vegan mecca for me. Jesus. Well, anyway, no, 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 you're just like you know what? Romanesque. That's mecca the kind of thing that you either <laughs> love or exactly. you're like, oh my God, I'm never eating meat yeah, again. Exactly. Get rid of uh, it. Ew, ew, ew. So anyways, yeah. really cool place. So uh, <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> throwing the hearts around. By the way, if you're if you're a vegan or you have a sort of like, just sort of look away or stop listening for a second and go blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. plug your uh, ears. So I bought a 10 pound pork belly. Oh yeah, which is a uh, a raw. It's, it's it's basically a, a fresh bacon slab is what they call it, um, with the rind on, which basically means the skin on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what are you gonna I'm make go- pork rinds? No, I'm not. What I'm Aww. going to do is it's um, the skins, though. I think I yes, have uh, taken that, cut it up into three sections, and have done different rubs. I've done a, a, a what did I do? I did a brown sugar and salt. I mm-hmm. did a brown sugar salt and. Uh, pepper, and then I also did a Ugh. brown sugar, salt, and maple syrup. You rub. realize I'm going to have very nice dreams this evening. That's great. That's all great. All about well, the bacon. <laughs> and all of, all of those will be, um, I'll smoke those in a couple days. It'd be great if your mic worked. Dr. Yeah, it'd Normal be great forgot if I like, to turn his the own right mic button on. Here. I was going to say, <laughs> as a guest of Strange Love, you'll be like providing us a little oh, totally. taste bacon of kickback. That. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bacon. Sounds good. Yeah. God, I love bacon. It's good for the cholesterol, right? You know, when I first when you when when we discussed that you would be on the show, suddenly I became very cheerful because I realized that 
I would actually be able to discuss my love of bacon, and it would be valid because I would be talking to someone else who. Well, you were a vegetarian or vegan or something like that. I was a veg. No, not a vegan. I was a vegetarian for almost a year. In and How old almost were you? How specific, old were you? I was a teenager. I and was, your dad would like do I was the 14 or baby 15. back ribs and the ribs. I was a vegetarian so, oh, like almost entirely to piss off my father. Yeah, that's because good. That's it, what you, you should know, That's do. what you do as a teenager. And then piss off we had father. a barbecue yeah. one summer and, and he did the unforgivable thing. He, he made ribs and he said, I'm going to make ribs. And I kind of cried a little and this is the sad thing is they would they would ignore the fact that bacon went missing from the refrigerator from time to time. <laughs> They would ignore that, but but in order for me to to <laughs> consume the ribs, I had to denounce vegetarianism. <laughs> you had to renounce it, like I you did. know, raise your hand. I had to say, yeah, I am a, no longer. We need, a, we, we the need the a, a term like a new class of people who are vegetarians who <laughs> can eat bacon, right? They're, they're, exactly. I, I feel like that's a whole section. That's gone missing because honestly, there there are a wide swath. Because you know, I've tried eating the turkey bacon, and I don't understand. I mean, you know. Will you renounce vegetarianism I right renounce now for it. us on the show? I'll say no, no to the vegetarianism. I like my pig. I like my I like cow. My pig. I like my lamb Scott, from time to time. Can you renounce vegetarianism? Could you? Oh, could, what do you mean? Like I love the bacon. Meat? I don't even need to renounce it. I've always. No, but you gotta state it, brother. No. I renounce it. <laughs> you screw gotta it. bring I mean, it. I don't say I bring it, it to the Lord. To each his own. But I gotta tell you. I, Amen, brother. I I bacon bacon. Put your hands up. We know you can't touch it. You know. <laughs> I can't touch my shoulders, but at least I can do this. Ah, what's up? Oh, Bacon, I love you. You're my friend, Bacon. Even though I eat you. <laughs> bacon likes that. Bacon. It does. It likes bacon to be eaten. To be. It likes to be talked to. It likes to be spoken to. It likes to be eaten. What about it's, our studio audience? The swine the studio audience, do you. Like close to do human you... genome? <laughs> I, I'm just saying. What? You know what? Let's talk. I don't want to talk about cannibalism. Okay. Okay? I have to talk about cannibalism enough in my day to life when my. Do I need to cue the gospel music again? No, no, no. Okay. We're done with the cannibals and right. the gospel music. We're not into it. Are there any questions from the studio audience or from the chat room? I have a question. I hope you haven't answered it yet. Then it would be redundant. <laughs> but I was wondering where the name Vidoop came from. Vidoop. Oh, great question. That's a really good question. we didn't ask We it. haven't asked Because we're crap uh, hosts. No, that's a great question. Um, uh, Vidoop is actually short for video poop. Oh, so it no, is. No, I'm just kidding. It's totally, totally <laughs> it kidding. is video Sorry, balloon. I'm kidding. It's not. That's not what it Your is. marketing guys are going to be calling tomorrow going, no, thanks, Scott. I'm sure they will. Really good. Good work. Uh, <laughs> no, what what it, uh, Vadoop is just, we literally like threw a bunch of words against the wall. This wasn't me. This was before I was Who was sitting on the domain? <clears throat> no, nobody was. That was the point. It, really? Is, it was, God. what we did is we tried to find like a bunch of words. Uh, and it was actually somebody's girlfriend had come up with the word Vadoop. <laughs> it's always the damn girlfriend. It always it is. It is. You know, it's funny. Um, I'm gonna take a little. So a tech here. startup is just no, like no. a band. Wait, well, he's taking it aside. I'm t- I'm somebody, a, no, I'm taking it aside. Pause, Dr. Normal. Does anybody, does anybody? Does anybody know like Linux? You know, different flavors of Linux. I'm familiar oh, with God. Linux. So there's, there's, yeah. there's Debian. Linux. Yes. Has anybody heard of Debian? Yes. Mm-hmm. Does anybody know why it's called Debian? No. Because someone was screwing a girl named Debbie. That's right. That's true. <laughs> oh yeah. You are correct. And do you know do you know who was screwing Debbie? The guy that made the Debbie and Linux? Uh well actually it was. <laughs> Ian. <but> Ian. <laughs> exactly. It was Debbie Ian. No, anyway. That's so cute. Are we Debbie sued Ian? for this podcast? And it's a funny story because like they like they totally broke up like you know, like whatever, a year into like sued Debbie for and this podcast. Like, anyways. Mm-hmm. No, so this is all public you can go on Wikipedia and Oh okay. So good. It's, not, yeah, it's, it's on Wikipedia, Wikipedia, it's true. <laughs> holy holy. Um Wikipedia better so say anyways, nice one, things about Somebody's me. girlfriend came up with the name of it. And so, so we, did a, we did a search across yeah. all these different things. No, that was the fedora thing. Uh, oh, yeah. The hat with the fedora. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so we did a search across like all the different languages and everything to make sure it wasn't like, you know, Vidoop didn't mean like, you know, kill your mother in Swahili <laughs> or something. And sure enough, it didn't mean anything and we could get all the domain names. So we did it. And uh, and that's that. And it's it's one of those names that like, you know, it doesn't mean anything, but like you you kind of... You can remember it, and you know it's very memorable. It rolls yeah. off the tongue like the doop-a-loop. The doop-a-loop. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Be one yeah. Of I think that's been copyrighted by Miss Burroughs. We want to stop saying it. we have to pay her or something. I, somebody's sitting on that domain. You know it. <laughs> the doop-a-loop-a-loop. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. 
Well, that's good. I don't, I don't have that in the keyboard. If you were wise, you'd go to the do. Oh, Lord, she's singing now. <laughs> that must mean end of show. I should put the martini down is what it means, but I, we're almost out of pork product, so I'm not going so to. So as we do at the end of the show, do you have any questions for us? Ooh. Oh, wow. No, I actually don't. It's, oh. been, a, uh, it's been a fantastic time. Fantastic. It's been great. It has. Oh my gosh, the show is over. The show is over. It seems like such. <laughs> that's, so, that's so like that's so deterministic, right? The show is over. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. We've learned the origin of Debian. I think you know that's yeah, a good, that's, a, that's a good that's great a good way stopping to end, point. Right? <laughs> We've learned that everybody in the room likes bacon. That's important. That's right. There's no vegans in this room. Do Did the they... Ubuntu guys know the origin of Debian? Did oh, the, yeah, for sure. For where sure. did a lot, Ubuntu, a lot of the Ubuntu come guys from? Are, okay. uh, what, what they're else? the ones who told Ubuntu the story. Ubuntu right? means uh, like like community in yeah. not Swahili or Swahili, something. In, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. some other South African, African right? Cause he's, yeah, it might be South African. Yeah. Yeah. It means something somewhere. But it's a Debian derivative, right? Isn't it? Yeah, it totally yeah. is. It's, yeah. a, it's like a, it's, I don't want to say it's a ripoff, but it's a, just a... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! It's actually it's it's Ubuntu is awesome. Like Debian has a lot of process in the Ubuntu. Anyways, we're we're fading to black here. This so is our gonna, fade out music. I'm not going to give you guys the. Uh... Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Yes, it's been a lovely Double, evening, you. Scott. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yay! For yeah, all of really. Us. Yay! Thank you to the studio audience in the chat room. Thank you, Doctor Normal. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for electing me Strange Love Live host. Oh boy! <laughs> Have another. Kim, you should stop talking now. No, seriously, Scott. Thank you so much for coming wow. on the show. It's been Thanks lovely. We'll yeah. have to have you again because we have so many topics that we have not covered yet. That's so right. Much more to talk about, but it's great. And more We'd bacon to. products to eat. Heck yeah! Thanks a lot, Scott. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Good night, everybody. Thank Good you night. so much. <laughs> <laughs>